Welcome to ElectronLine. Here let's talk about the work done by friction because it's often very misunderstood. So let's try to clarify it so that from now on we don't have any problems with it anymore. So what do we want to look at? First of all we can define the work done as being a force times distance or force times displacement. We can also define work as a change in energy. Now, if we want to do this in vector quantities, we can define the work done as the dot product of force times displacement, which is the magnitude of the force times the magnitude of the displacement times the cosine of the angle between the two. Now, typically, when the force and the displacement are in the same direction so that the angle between them is equal to zero, the cosine of zero is one, and we don't need to worry about it. We simply multiply the force times the distance covered and so we don't worry about the angle. But sometimes we do and we have to take that into account. Now, if the work done adds energy to the system, the work done is considered positive. If the work done removes energy from the system, the work done is negative. So when we take a look at this diagram right here, we have a an object with mass m being pushed to the right by this force. We also have a coefficient of friction equal to mu, and so there will be a friction force. The way we calculate the friction force is we take the weight of the object. From that, we calculate the normal force, the surface pushing back, typically the same. The normal force is equal to the weight of the object. And then the friction force is defined as a normal force times mu. So mg mu is the friction force. And so you see that the friction force is directed in the opposite direction of the motion of the block, so therefore, when we calculate the work done by the force, we take the force times the displacement, we do a dot product, which means the magnitude of the force times the magnitude of the displacement times the cosine of the angle between them. But since the force pushing to the right is in the same direction as the displacement, the angle is zero, so the cosine of zero is simply one, so it's simply the force times the displacement, and it's a positive quantity. The work done by the friction is a little bit different because we see that the displacement is to the right but the force of friction is pushing to the left. So the multiplication of the two via the dot product, it's the magnitude of the force times the magnitude of the displacement times the cosine of the angle between them. But since the displacement is to one direction and the force friction in the opposite direction, that's a 180 degree difference and the cosine of 180 is minus 1, so therefore we get a negative quantity minus the force for friction times the displacement because they are in opposite direction. So typically we can think of the work done by the friction force as being a negative quantity. So now let's take a look at this example. Here we have a block with a mass of 10 kilograms that has initial velocity of 10 meters per second and it moves up a ramp, it gains a height of 2 meters and when it gets to the top of the ramp, it has a velocity of 4 meters per second. There is a coefficient of friction, and so therefore it will probably also lose some energy due to the friction force. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to find the work done by the friction in this case, which we know is going to be negative quantity. How do we do that? Well, there's two ways of looking at it. We can say that the initial energy that the block had minus the energy loss due to friction is going to be equal to the final energy it has when it gets to the top of the ramp. Another way of thinking about it would be to say that you have an initial amount of energy and you have a final amount of energy. Now this final amount of energy will be smaller than the initial amount if you lost some energy somewhere in between. So we have to add to that the energy loss due to friction and we have to make that a positive quantity. So either you make it a negative quantity on the left side of the equation or a positive quantity on the right side of the equation, otherwise you won't get the right answer. So let's go ahead and work out this problem. The initial energy that the block had will simply be kinetic energy. So we have some initial kinetic energy, no potential energy because it's at the lowest height. And then when it gets to the final, final position right here, it'll have some final kinetic energy plus some final potential energy because it's gained height, plus we have to account for any work done by the friction force, energy, energy lost by the friction, but we must make that a positive quantity because presumably if we lose some energy due to friction, 
these two added together will be less than this, so we have to add the lost energy to make it equal to the left side. So let's go ahead and write and bring this over to the left side. So we have the kinetic energy initial equals, oh, not equals because I want to move it to the left side, minus kinetic energy final, minus potential energy final equals the work done by friction. But again, we have to remember that we're looking at a positive quantity, so the absolute value of the work done by the friction, even though we realize the work done by friction must be negative because it removes energy from the system. Kinetic energy initial will be one half times the mass, 10 kilograms, times the initial velocity, 10 meters per second square, because we know the kinetic energy, by definition, is equal to one half mv squared, and the potential energy, by definition, is equal to mgh. So the initial kinetic energy minus the final kinetic energy, it's now slowed down to 4 meters per second, so it has less kinetic energy, so it's 1 half times the mass times 4 squared minus the potential energy at the end, which will be the mass times g, 9.8, times the height gain, 2 meters. All that will equal the work done by friction, and again, that will be the absolute value of that, because we know that the friction, the work done by friction is actually negative. So working this out, this is a thousand times a half, that would be 500 joules, minus, that would be 16, 160 uh, uh, times a half, which is 80 joules, minus, that would be, uh, let's see, 19.6, that would be 196 joules, and that equals the work done by friction. So, with a calculator, well, I guess we don't need a calculator. That's, uh, if you subtract 280, that's 5, that's 220, plus 4, that's 224. So 224 joules equals the work done by friction. However, that is the absolute value of the work. We realize that friction does negative work, so we can say that the work done by friction is equal to minus 224 joules if you're looking for the correct answer because we realize that work done by friction must be a negative quantity. So that's how we can go ahead and work it out and that's by definition how we define the work done and we can define the work done by force times distance or the work done by change in energy. That's how we do it.